Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, Explorer Classroom. My name is Joe Grabowski from National Geographic, and I will be your host for today. Really excited to be joined by our Explorer Tierney Tees today. And before we meet her, there she is waving. Before we meet Tierney, we are going to take a quick look at our classrooms joining us and see where everybody is uh, geographically. So I'm going to use National Geographic's MapMaker Interactive and we'll take a quick look and see where everybody's joining us from today. So it's going to take just a second for my screen to share and then we'll pull up the map. All right, there we go. You should see my screen now. So you can see that X, that is me uh, in just outside of Guelph, Ontario here in Canada. You can see our first classroom there in Mississauga. And as I start to back out slowly, we're going to start to get a feel for our classrooms. We've got a classroom joining us in Thunder Bay, another classroom joining us in Virginia. We'll back out a little bit more. We've got a couple classrooms joining us in California, and then we have a classroom that's joining us uh, in Florida as well. And we should have a classroom joining us in St. Martin today. So we're really excited uh, to have such a great group of classrooms joining us. So I'm gonna stop that screen share. And a reminder, I know we're gonna have viewers who are watching us live on YouTube. Um, you can get in on the action, send in your questions with the YouTube chat sidebar. Um, and we're gonna answer some questions as well. Take pictures in the classroom. This is for our camera classrooms too. Share them on Twitter with the hashtag Explore Classroom and tag at Nacho Education. We absolutely love to see where everybody's watching from. So this month on Explore Classroom, we're learning about ocean plastics. Nine million tons of plastic waste ends up in our ocean every year. So far, over 700 species of marine animals have been reported to have eaten or become entangled in plastics. And the amount of plastics in the ocean is on track to triple by 2050. But by understanding the issue and taking action, we can all help stop that from happening. In support of the National Geographic's Planet or Plastic Initiative, Explore Classroom is proud to present ocean plastic experts like Tierney all September long. So Dr. Tierney Tees is a National Geographic Explorer, Marine Biologist, Research Associate at the California Academy of Sciences and an independent filmmaker. She serves on the board of Think Beyond Plastic, a global leader in advancing solutions to plastic pollution through innovation and entrepreneurship. Her current research projects include tracking marine megafauna with satellite tags to reduce bycatch, quantifying the role nature plays in human well-being and environmental decision making through neuroimaging, and producing a narrative film on the long-term solutions to plastic pollution. So Tierney, it is so great to have you joining us today. We're excited to learn a little bit more about you and just what you're working on in the world of plastics. Yeah, well, thank you, Joe, and it's great to see everybody. I hope you're having a great day, and I'm super happy to be here. I'm um, right now in California, so not too far from the San Francisco schools, um, and really excited to talk to you about, about a problem that may seem kind of overwhelming, and, um, and maybe you feel a little helpless because there's so much plastic, but I think it's really a cause for, for inspiration and for hope. And so a lot of the work I do is, is um, looking for solutions and meeting people who are so inspired by the problem that they're finding workable ways to, to solve it. And that's what gets me up in the morning and gets me really excited. So I thought I'd just, I have some visuals to share with you as well as, well as a short film, which is the the um the prequel to the film i'm working on right now so um it's called that one it's called the plastic vagabond and i'll tell you a little bit about that but first let me share my screen with you guys and we'll walk through some of the um some of the solutions a little bit more of the problem that joe talked about um so you get a sense of of what the scale of what we're dealing with is now okay so i'm starting my screen share Start that, and let's start here. So I hope you guys have all seen the National Geographic um, issue, Planet or Plastic, because it's got oh, Let me pause you for just one second. Um, it's shared with us, but can you try the share screen again and make sure you choose the option for entire desktop or whole screen? Okay. Um, when you try just an application, I don't know why, but it seems to, to crash when, when we try it that way. Um, screen share, so the green button. Yep. And then, and then, oh, oh, the, um, which window? Google Hangout window? No, look for the one. There should be one that says entire screen or whole desktop. Uh, oh, desktop. Yeah. Okay. And then start that. Okay. 
Right. Jackpot. Right. Okay. Is it screen sharing now? Yep. Okay. Let me go find my, where it is. Where did my talk go? Okay. There we go. All right. So, yes. I hope you've seen the, um, the June issue of National Geographic. And if you haven't, definitely check it out because it's got some amazing articles in it and really gives you a great overview of the problem that we're tackling. A um, little bit about me. I've always loved the ocean. That's me when I was little um, in a very uncomfortable wetsuit <laughs> that my parents made for me so I could stay in the ocean a long time. I spent a lot of the time, a lot of my time in the ocean chasing this real, rather strange looking fish, the mola, um, and also doing several things, um, filmmaking and helping develop expeditions for National Geographic student expeditions. Um, I'm also this year a coach for the National Geographic Geo Challenge. I hope you guys check that out, especially middle schoolers, because you can um, come up with a project to, to solve plastic pollution and enter it in this great competition. So I'll be coaching that this year. Um, you know, and the more I worked in marine conservation, the more time I spent in the ocean, the more plastic I was seeing. Like this, for instance, um, I helped set up a student expedition in Bali. And this is the north coast of Bali, Pamutran Beach. And sometimes there's just so much trash, we can't even see the beach. So um, a lot of the student expeditions I go on and I take students on, we spend a lot of time cleaning the beach. So um, that really piqued my interest. What could I do to help solve this problem? And this is another picture from Belize, another place where we do, we bring students out into the field to do marine work and marine conservation work. Um, and this little hermit crab, he didn't find a mollusk shell to live in. There was so much trash on the beach, he started, he took a little cap of a Bic pen and decided that that would be his home. And we were seeing all sorts of little hermit crabs running around with plastic shell, plastic caps as their shells. So we're really not, it's not just ugly for us, but it's ugly for the animals we're sharing the planet with. So here's a picture of just how big the problem is. And some, I, I thought this was a good way of sort of wrapping your mind around some of these really big numbers, like just how big 8.3 billion metric tons is. That's about, you know, 18 billion pounds. And, but if you looked at that in terms of whales, whales weigh a lot. That would be enough whales if you put them um, tail to tail, t head to tail, that we could wrap the earth 60 times in the weight of plastic that we are making and, and our, our trash. So that's a whole, that's a whole, lot, of, whole lot of trash. Um, and the problem is, is that it doesn't degrade into something useful for other animals. And we're on a big trajectory to just make more. This is a, this is a scene from a famous movie called The Graduate. And um, when, you know, we've only had plastic since the 1950s. So we haven't had them that long. And they used to be seen as this great career opportunity. This is a scene from a movie where the dad is telling his future son-in-law, I got one word to tell you, it's plastics. There's a great future in plastics. And there was for a while until we really started to take count, account of the, of the long-term damage that's being caused by plastic trash in our environments. So why, is that a pro why are they a problem? Well, because they're very different from the way nature makes its waste. This is a picture of a nurse log. This is actually taken from, from um, someone who sent it into National Geographic to our Your Shot competition. And um, this nurse log is called a nurse log because it helps nurse other smaller trees into, into being. As it dies, it provides nitrogen and nutrients and substrate and all those critical elements that feed the next generation, feed the next trees. Plastic doesn't do that. When it degrades, it degrades into... Um, into non-usable waste. And the problem is that that waste isn't just, um, it's not just unsightly and ugly, but it actually concentrates pollutants in it. 
And when it degrades, it releases those additional nasty chemicals into the environment, chemicals that can disrupt our reproductive systems and our the way we fight diseases and weaken us. Not just weaken us, but weaken lots of other species. Um, so we have a lot of plastic here in, in the United States, a lot of waste that we make. And we used to send it all to China. Well, not all of it, but we sent a lot of it to China. But China now has a lot of waste of its own. And in January, it stopped accepting any of our plastic. Um, so now we have even more. And we really need to figure out how to reduce that waste and do something useful with it. <clears throat> so when you look at plastic, you know, a lot of it ends up in the ocean because the ocean is downhill from everywhere. And it doesn't just sort of get mistaken. Well, it does get mistaken for food, but it breaks down when it gets into the ocean, into all these little tiny parts. And one startling fact that I found is that we've got 500 times more pieces of plastic in the ocean than there are stars in our galaxy. That's crazy, isn't it? Problem is, is that it looks like food to a lot of animals. It's less dense than seawater, much plastic, and it floats on the surface. And the, the, the other tricky thing, nasty, clever thing about plastic though, not very clever actually, is that when it gets algae on it, that um, it settles on the little plastic bits in the, in the ocean, they start to produce a chemical called dimethyl sulfide. And that smells like food to seabirds. Seabirds actually track dimethyl sulfide from normal al algae blooms. But when the algae gets on the plastic, it makes the plastic smell like food. And then the birds go in and they eat it. And they just keep eating it because it smells like it's something good for them to eat. So that is really worrisome. So personally, I would love to have a planet of plankton in the ocean. Look at all this beautiful plankton. I have a soft spot for plankton. It's so diverse. It's so colorful. It's so um, ubiquitous. And this is just a small sample of what you see when you scoop up seawater and look at it in a microscope or look at it in the, in the lab. And some of these planktonic creatures, I know everyone's told that blue whales are the largest creatures on the planet. Well, actually, it's an animal in the plankton called a siphonophore that gets to be longer than a blue whale. It's certainly not heavier, but longer. So there's all sorts of world record holders in the plankton. Now, um, Oh, oh, here, before I start, so I'm going to show you a, um, a film. It's a short six-minute film about a little plastic seahorse that was found on the beach and the adventures it had, and it's actually the first part of the, set of the movie that I'm working on now. Okay, so I hope you can hear this. Just, um, I'll put the sound way up. Okay, it's six minutes. You might think I'm too stiff to travel, but trust me, I'm on a wild ride. It started out pretty carefree. I thought I was in good hands. Emma was my best friend. But this time, I wasn't coming back. I met the most amazing creatures in the sea. Drifters, like me. They call themselves plankton. This was a pulsating galaxy with living spaceships riding the currents. I noticed more and more static pieces, though. Colorful chunks floating 
far out at sea. We got all tangled up at the surface and met the jaws of a silver giant. this all about? I was still surrounded by stiff pieces, and this crew was talking about us in French. It was here, on the Tara, that I finally learned the truth. My name is Horsey Plasticus, and I'm made from petroleum. Around the world, eight million tons of plastic wash into the sea every year, along with trillions of synthetic fibers and microbeads. Some predict plastics will outweigh fish in the ocean by 2050. Crazy thing is, we're related to plankton. Lots of plastics are actually derived from dead plankton that sank millions of years ago and fossilized at the bottom of the sea. Today, humans process these fossil fuels into petrochemicals. But at what cost? We plastics don't biodegrade. Instead, we break down into microparticles. These tiny fragments are mistaken for food by birds, fish, and all kinds of plankton. I don't want to be gobbled down by hungry copepods. We also create homes for harmful bacteria and viruses that sail around the world on pieces like me. These star-shaped algae here are new to the high seas. Poisons like DDT, PCBs, and bisphenols are coating our bodies. We are the plastosphere. This was Taramed's mission. All these biologists, sailors, and artists were working together to explore how microplastics pollute the ocean. Why me? I'm creating a global crisis. But what could I possibly do about it here, stuck in this petri dish? I had to tell the world my story. Late one night, the whole crew was busy collecting samples. So I decided to escape the Tara. Far away, I reached a rocky shore and met up with a new crew. They were collecting plastic on the beach in an international call to action. That's how I ended up here with 16,000 plastic caps. Art beats trash, that's for sure. I don't belong in a landfill or the sea, but I'll still be around in a few hundred years.
Okay, so that's um that's the plastic vagabond, and um and <clears throat> I'll, the next film that I'm working on, the little seahorse escapes from that plastic mural, and he goes on a terrestrial journey onto land to find out how to make how to rethink plastic out of biomaterials that when they degrade, they become food for others and they don't become pollution. So that's the next stage of his amazing journey. And I thinking, I'm thinking about doing it out of puppets. So, um, oops. So that's, um, so what can we do to, to combat this problem? Well, there's lots and lots of things that each one of us can do. You know, let your grocery store know that you don't want to have everything wrapped in plastic. I was just over in England and the grocers over there, uh, well, plastic, I was talking to a plastic manufacturing firm and they said, you know, <clears throat> we, we just supply the demand. The grocery stores ask us for plastic clamshells. They ask us to put, they, they want to put their produce into plastic. So it's the grocery stores that are asking for this. And we can have an effect if we tell the grocery store what we want. So, you know, <clears throat> bring your own bag, support farmer's markets, do beach cleanups. Not just the beach, but anywhere around your school. Um, you can pick up trash. And then, you know, talk to your parents <clears throat> if you're not old enough to vote and and vote for bans like banning plastic straws and banning all sorts of um, plastic bags. Uh, one thing that really worries me is that, <clears throat> excuse me, there are nine states in the United States that are trying to put bans on bans, which means they're trying to stop states from creating bans on plastic straws, um, which I think is really dangerous. I think states should be allowed to to say, if we want to ban plastic straws and plastic bags, we should be able to do that. So, <clears throat> so that's important. Um, we also need to bring our own water bottles um, because, you know, water bottles, it takes twice as much water in a plastic bottle to, um, to make a plastic water bottle than the water that's in it. That's kind of crazy. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what we're wearing. Our clothing is actually made from a lot of petroleum-based products. <clears throat> if you guys were all to take a look at the, your clothing label, you might wanna just take look at your neighbor and take a peek at what your clothing is made out of. If it says polyester, it's actually made from fossil fuel and from a plastic that when it sheds little fibers, gets into the water stream, into the ocean, and can actually harm animals. <clears throat> So, but what, I know it may sound a little hopeless, but what I get really excited about is hearing when big corporations are deciding that they want to reduce the amount of plastic packaging that they're making and make it recyclable or compostable, which means that it can break down into food for other animals. And some big companies have, have um, made some very large commitments like, Walmart and Coca-Cola and Unilever and Pepsi and Evian, L'Oreal, Mars Bars, Nestle, you know, Marks and Spencers, which is over in England. So um, lots and lots of companies are, are seeing that they need to be responsible for the trash that they're selling um, to the public. So something that all of us can do um, immediately is think about the clothes that we're wearing. And like I said, a lot of clothing is made from, from petroleum, fossil fuels. <clears throat> and when we wash them, the little fibers get off, they break down and they get into the water stream. And they're, um, then they wash out and little plankton eat them, the fish eat the plankton, and then we end up getting exposed to that. Essentially, um, we're gonna be eating the plastic that's coming off our clothing if we eat seafood and things like that. <clears throat> so when we create new fabrics, we need to think of the whole circular economy. We need to think about the end of the material so that when it degrades, it's like that nurse log that I showed you a picture of. It makes food for the next generation. So <clears throat> I work with a group called Think Beyond Plastics. Um, and we are an innovation think tank 
that helps small businesses that have good ideas scale up to become successful. And we have machines where they can test their materials and we run competitions um, to bring um, <clears throat> funding as well as attention to people who've got some really good ideas and want to make it a business to help solve the plastic pollution problem. Some of the companies that I'm really excited about, like Carlsberg, instead of having those plastic rings that keep the cans together, they're coming up with this recyclable glue. So you can get rid of the plastic cans. There's the lolly straw that it's made from edible seaweed. You could actually eat your straw. And a great place for keeping on top of some of the latest innovations is bio-based world news. And Mango Materials is one of the companies that Think Beyond Plastic has been um, supporting. So, you know, we've got to think about those nurse logs. I keep bringing this back because when nature, when things die in the natural world, and, you know, nature's been at this for four billion years, it's got recycling pretty well figured out. Four billion years of tried and true experimentation. And when nature, when things die in nature, they break down into food for other creatures. And we, that is a model that we've got to figure out how to, how, to, how to mimic and how to imitate in our manufacturing. So my big dream, my greatest dream is that my kids, when they're grown, these are my two little ones, my dream is that when my kids are grown, <clears throat> they say to me, you know, mommy, remember when we were little and we were kind of drowning in plastic waste? Well, I sure am glad we figured out how to solve that problem. That's my dream. Okay, so um, I'll stop there. I will stop sharing my screen, and I'll come back to you guys. And um, let's see, how do I stop the share screen? Stop. You're back. I'm back, yeah. So, so well, yeah. I was going to say thank you, Tierney. That was great. And that, that video was awesome. Really oh. well done. And I look forward to seeing the next adventure. The next adventure. I do want to say that um, I did that in, in um, partnership with the Plankton Chronicles and um, Tara. The Tara expeditions are an amazing set of ocean. Um, it's an amazing ship, sailing ship, that's going around the world doing incredible expeditions. And that one... They actually captured that little seahorse. That wasn't just for the movie. <laughs> they actually captured that little seahorse in one of their trawls in the Mediterranean. And that's what inspired the idea for the film. All so right. It's a great, it's a great resource for um, classrooms to look into, the Tara, Tara expeditions. Okay. Well, a quick shout out to any classrooms on YouTube. Send your questions in via the YouTube chat sidebar. And a shout out to Cache High School. Uh, who gave us a hello out on YouTube. So let's meet one of our live classrooms. We're gonna go to Mr. Lavogue's class first. They're joining us from North Palm Beach. Let me turn their microphone on. And there we go. How are we doing, Florida? Hello. Hello. Hey guys. So, so Ms. Tierney, who's, what's your first name is, and then ask your question. My, my first name is Pascal. And, Hi, Pascal. Um, what can we do to stop plastic pollution? What can yeah. we do here to stop plastic pollution? Okay, well, I'm so glad you asked. So all of you guys, you know, we there's a lot of microfibers that come off our clothes. So one thing you could do is don't wash your clothes as much. When you put them in the dryer, that breaks a lot of the fibers. So air dry them. Um, don't wash them for as long in super hot water because that will break down the fibers as well. Try to, buy fiber, try to buy clothing that's not made from polyester and made from plastic, you know, plastic materials. Try to buy like organic cotton or something like this. Hemp, you know, materials that aren't made from plastic. Um, don't wash your shoes in with your soft fabrics because that will break the fibers as well. So with our clothing, we can make a huge difference. Plus, you can buy a little, a little um, bag called the Guppy's Friend and put some of your, if you have clothes that are made of um, polyester and plastic, put it in there because the Guppy's Friend will help capture those microfibers so they don't get into the waste stream, the water stream, and end up in the ocean. That's, that's with our clothing. We can do a lot there. 
and use, um, you know, gentle, gentle um, detergents. We can also, when we go to the grocery store, <clears throat> we can um, take our reusable bags. And so we're not bringing, not using plastic bags. We can say no to plastic straws and reusable, reusable straws. We can buy in bulk. So, you, you know, those little yogurt containers, everything's wrapped in plastic. Try, just make it a game. Make it a competition with your friends and say, okay, who can have the least amount of plastic in their, in their trash can? And whoever wins maybe gets an ice cream party. But um, it's actually, you can, you can do it if you just think ahead before you leave the house to bring your own utensils, bring your own bag, bring your own water bottle so you don't need to have plastic. All right. On great strategies to get students started. We're going to visit Mrs. Shelton's class now. They're joining us in Benicia, California. Let me find their microphone. How are we doing, California? Hey, hi, guys. Hi, hi California. <laughs> I'm in California, too. Hi, my name is Caitlin. Um, hi, Caitlin. Have you ever kept a piece of trash from the beach? Have I ever kept a piece of trash? Oh yeah, yeah. I go oh, on yeah. all the time. Every time, actually, every time I go to the beach, I carry a bag with me to pick up trash every time. Because unfortunately, I find trash on the beach all the time. But you remember in the movie, that plastic cap mural? That was from plastic caps that we found on the beach. And, and that was made by an elementary school here in Carmel that learned how to use uh, um, drills, and they drilled in 16,000 plastic caps and made that beautiful mural from caps that they found on the beach and in their recycle, in, um, and also in their trash. So um, I've definitely, whenever I see plastic on the beach, I always pick it up, and I always try to recycle it. All right. Good question. Let's see, let us go. We're gonna go to Mississauga this time. We've got some great four or fives. Uh, joining us with Mrs. St. Ange. If you don't mind, turn your microphone on for me. Say hi, and let's get a question. Hi! Hi, hi you guys. Hi. What is that? <laughs> That's a cute stuffed animal. <laughs> it's a cow? Yeah, you have a question. Yeah? Okay. So every time I see plastic, like a plastic soda bottle or something, there's so little plastic. So even if everyone threw, threw out five plastic soda bottles, there still wouldn't be 8.3 billion, billion tons of plastic. So what I'm saying is basically pla there's barely any plastic, so why is there all that much plastic in total? In order to get that much, you would have to, you would have to throw out plastic daily since the, since the beginning of time. Well, actually... What's amazing, I know that number is just mind-blowing, isn't it? But it's actually, <clears throat> each one of us in the United States, we create 300 pounds of plastic every year. So if you just, just your classroom, just um, keep track of all the plastic trash that your classroom makes in one week, you'll see it really adds up. And how many people are on the planet? Do you guys know how many people are on the planet? How many? Eight billion. Eight billion? Yeah. Eight billion. Yeah, yeah. We're pretty we're pretty we're pretty close. Yeah. We're pretty close to eight billion people. Right. We're a little below that, but we are heading to nine and ten, and some accounts say we'll be up to twelve billion by the middle of the century. So when that happens and everyone's making trash and everyone's throwing out plastic water bottles, maybe the plastic water bottle's really thin, but it all adds up. And it's a lot more than just plastic water bottles. It's yogurt containers. It's plastic wrap that's wrapped around apples and cucumbers for no apparent reason. There's, you know, people wrap up pineapples and avocados in plastic and bananas in plastic and they've got their own nice natural wrapping to begin with. So, and then just look at what's in your car, what's in your classroom, what's on your desk. That's all plastic. What's your computer? 
plastic, I don't want to demonize it because we have not, we wouldn't be where we are in terms of lots of medical innovations and lots of, you know, transportation. Plastic has been phenomenal for our progress as a species, but it has come at a cost. And it's a huge opportunity now for us to come up with new materials that are better for the planet. But I think that was a great question. And it does seem like how could it be such a huge, huge amount? But it all adds up because it's happening every day with every one of us. All right. Let's go to Thunder Bay, Ontario. Mrs. Wowchuck's grade six is. You'll just have to turn the mic on for me. Say hi. And let's grab a question. Well, hi, you guys. Hi. Bye. Bye. Uh, so we're adopting a body of water in our city. Do you have any tips for us on how to conserve our body of water? Which body of water are you adopting? Cam River. Cam River. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can um, certainly, are you adopting one stretch of the river? Yes. Yeah, I imagine. So you'll want to, everyone get gloves and you'll want to start gathering the trash that's along that river because that's, that's a huge a huge thing that you could do to just every part, everything that washes by your section of river, don't let the plastic out of there. Get it out of there before it goes to the downstream part of the river. So that's one thing you can do. There's also, <clears throat> at, um, you guys should look up thing, uh, a thing called Mr. Trash Wheel. Have you ever heard of Mr. Trash Wheel? He's, he's a solar powered paddle wheel that you can install at a river mouth that, that gathers trash into it. Um, <clears throat> so you don't have to be there picking it up yourself. Mr. Trash Wheel does it. And you could build one of these and assemble it at your river mouth, depending on, um, or at your harbor. I don't know how fast the water's moving. There's also something called the sea bin, S-E-A-B-I-N. And this is a little, um, <clears throat> a little um, machine that can pull floating plastic into it so that you can gather that and toss it out. And harbors are putting that into their waterways so that around harbors that you can have just a slow flow into it so that animals can get out but the plastic can't. <clears throat> so um, river cleanups, looking for ways to automate that cleanup process like with trash, Mr. Trash Wheel or, um, you know, sea bin, those kinds of things. But I'm so glad you adopted a, um, adopted a, a, a river body. That's great. Yay. All right, very cool. We'll have to hear an update about that. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Phillips, Vista, California, grade six is. I'll turn your microphone on. How's everyone doing? Say hi. Hi. Hi, hi you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what made you want to become a marine biologist? Oh, well, I, well, I was born in California. I was born um, not so far from the Pacific Ocean, and I loved going in the ocean, although it was kind of cold. Um, once I got a wetsuit on, I could stay in the ocean for a lot longer. And, um, <clears throat> and I loved studying, I loved being outside, and I loved studying animals. And if you look in the ocean, there are so many amazing animals. So much animal creativity is in the ocean. The ocean is 99% of our living space, and it's packed with life. And so I just was enchanted by the ocean. And the first time I got to go diving on a coral reef, ah, it blew my mind. <clears throat> but I, you know, I didn't, I left California when I was 10 and I moved to a little landlocked state of Vermont. Um, and so then I watched nature documentaries about the ocean, like Jacques Cousteau and things like Blue Planet. And it was just such an amazing environment. It just seemed like a magical place right here on Earth. So it hooked me. All right. Awesome. Jacques Cousteau is definitely one of my heroes growing up. Him yeah. and David Attenborough. I never. And David Attenborough. Yeah. Their documentary is so amazing. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to. John Acorn to... in Canada. Sorry? <laughs> and John Acorn in Canada. All right. Excellent. There's. <laughs> A lot of really good nature documentaries out there, boys and girls. You can pretty much find anything you want. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Roach's class in Penn Laird, uh, mm -hmm. Virginia. Yep, Virginia. And they're a grade eight class. I'll turn your microphone on and let's get a question. How are we doing, grade eights? 
Can you guys have a question? Yes. How many All right. types of photoplankton are there? Or how many types of plankton are there? Oh, how many types of plankton are there? Well, you can divide the plankton into two basic groups. The phytoplankton, those are the ones that are photosynthetic, and the zooplankton, those are the animals that have to eat to live, heterotrophs. So you could divide it into those two basic groups. And then within those groups, oh my gosh, we're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of different species. So, you know, with the animal groups, <clears throat> The, you can divide the animal kingdom into about 36 basic groups called phyla. And um, there's pretty much, there's 27 different, 27 of the phyla are represented in the ocean. And so you've got things like jellies and, and um, translucent worms and, you know, a lot of fish larvae, which are plankton and siphonophores. And I mean, it's just, you know, there, and mollusks, snails, urchins have little planktonic larvae that look like rocket ships. Um, a lot of the things that you see in a coral reef that are stuck on the ground that look like they couldn't move at all, well, for that, when they have their little ones, their little ones they put out into the water column so that they can colonize new areas. And they're, so their larvae are planktonic larvae. So if you go in the plankton, it's really like a huge elementary school. <laughs> it's all the juveniles of all the guys living on the seafloor. Um, so it's filled with kids. That's what the plankton is. It's a bunch of kids having a wild time before they have to settle down on the seafloor. Some of them never settle down. They just drift all year, their whole life. But, um, <clears throat> but it's, that's a kind of impossible question to answer because there's so many species of plankton. Um, so let's see, I'd say if I had to put a number on it, <clears throat> um, it'd be upwards of 400,000, probably, if not more. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of species, yeah. All right, awesome. I love that comparison to the wild elementary <laughs> students before they settle down. That's great. Oh, and preschoolers, too. <laughs> yeah, yes. So our final class joining us is Mrs. Rossi's group. They're joining us uh, from St. Martin, and there's some grade 11 students. Let me turn their microphone on. How's it going? Yeah, hi you guys. <laughs> Great are to see you. To, are we allowed to questions? Are you allowed to what? Go ahead, squeeze two in. Are we allowed to questions? Yeah, squeeze two in right now. Go ahead. Okay, so my first question is we live on a really small island, so we don't really have an option to recycle. So what can we do to convince our government to start something for recycling? Huh. Well, <clears throat> you can come up with a business plan. So recycling, if you get a baler, um, they can they run around $30,000. But this is what a group is doing in Key Cocker in Belize. A high school has started this, raising money to buy a baler where you can take the plastic, um, plastic bottles, plastic waste, you can um, package it into, into cubes, like big cubes, bales, that you can then sell. And that becomes a market, that becomes a business. Because that, you know, once it's bailed, then it's usable and, and it's sorted and it's cleaned, then it's a usable material that can be self-sustaining as a business. So that's one thing. You could create a recycling plant that makes money for the island. Um, most really small islands will just ship it off to someone else to have to deal with it. Um, but you could also talk about, I mean, if you want to ban plastic bags, you could create a business where people on the island are making reusable bags and selling them to tourists. And you could design the fabric out of, um, you know, bio-based fabrics with great designs from, from the island, from your, your cultural history, from the animals that people see when they're diving around your island. So there's all sorts of innovative ways of coming up with businesses that can support recycling um, recycling activities and cleaning up, you know, reducing the waste that way. <clears throat> All right. So before we take your second question, what we're going to do, because the, the classrooms are starting to have to, to head out for their lunch, I'm going to wrap up the hangout. But Tierney, if you're available for a couple minutes, we can do a little after hours and do a couple more questions if you're up for it. 
Okay, but definitely everyone check out the National Geographic Geo Challenge too, especially it's for fifth graders to eighth graders, and that is, um, it's tackling plastics. It's all about plastics this year, the Nat Geo, the Geo Challenge. Tierney, you're stealing my outro. So oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Don't worry, I'm kidding. So if you feel inspired to help Tierney address ocean plastics, you can start by taking the pledge to reduce your single-use plastics at natgeokids.com backslash kids versus plastic. If your class is ready to dig deeper into this issue and brainstorm your own solutions to tackle plastic, registration is now open for the Geo Challenge. You can find links to that uh, in the video description, and I can send those out to class coming up next week. You can find the schedule, register for camera spots at the Explorer Classroom website, natgeo.org backslash Explorer Classroom. So Tierney, we'll get you to stick around with our classrooms, but thank you so much. Uh, for being with us today. Thank you for answering the questions, boys and girls. Great questions. And Tierney, we look forward to the next uh, video. Yes, me too. <laughs> Thanks, All right. Thanks, you guys. Keep Help picking up that video. Video. Classroom and and you. And that you Stick know. around if you have time. Plastic smells like food to fish. And All right. Well, thanks, everyone. You can wrap whales around.